So in the previous two videos, we looked at the hardware of the printer, how it works on the inside. Then we looked at the hardware of the interface and how we can match things up with the Arduino itself. Now it's time to look at programming the Arduino library so we have some high-level constructs to control the printer. Here we have a very simple version of this Epson 80 class which I'm using to control the printer. Uh, it's, it's quite simple. We just have a few uh, data elements here to hold the pin numbers that are associated with the pins of the printer. Uh, constructor here, just to make the new Epson 80, which is the name of the class. Here is a begin function, which basically assigns all the pin numbers we're going to use. Then here are the three public entry points. So we have character write, which as the description here, writes a single character to the bus, and it takes care of looking at the busy and the acknowledge pins. From this we can extract two uh, slightly more advanced behaviors, which is string write, which will take a string class and write it, which is a nicer high level approach, and we have line write, which also takes a string, but it's automatically going to add the character return and line feed at the end. And that's how we get the printer to advance and return the character basically while printing. Uh, then there's a few internal functions here which we'll look at a bit closer, which is bus write, clearing the bus, and then of course toggle strobe. So here's the actual source file now. We have the constructor, of course it's blank, so in the usual method of, of writing Arduino libraries, the constructor is blank, but then there's a begin function that takes care of all the initialization, so let's find that. Uh, here it is. So Epson 80 begin, we take the strobe pin, uh, a pointer to the bus, which is actually going to be an array of eight, or we're going to read an array of eight, it might not be, but there's no safety checking on that in this in this simple library. Uh, then we have the acknowledge pin and the, buzzy, and the busy pin. So of course it just does some assigning, uh, then copies the elements of the bus array over, and then sets here the pin modes. So of course the strobe pin we're controlling, it's an output. The acknowledge pin and the busy pin are inputs, we're listening to the printer. And then because the strobe pin is reverse logic, the default value must actually be high. Uh, so the latching happens on a high to low transition, so it must be high basically all the time unless we're toggling it. And actually that leads us right onto this, uh, this function. This is the toggle strobe, which was a private function. So here we see digital write strobe low, so that's the high to low transition that causes the latch. Then we have a one microsecond delay which ensures that we have the correct timing and then we have it right strobe pin high and then again ensuring the timing by delaying one microsecond. Uh, so up here we see the character write which is the most basic of all the functions. Uh, so we basically take this 8-bit character which we call data here. Um, we wait for the busy pin to drop. Now if you remember back to the timing diagram it was also possible to assert the data if the busy pin was high and the acknowledge pin was low. This was the printer saying it's ready. But the safest way and the simplest way is to only wait for the busy pin to be low. Because if the busy pin is low, then the printer is definitely ready. So that's all we look at here, is the busy pin. If it's high, then wait. And it does this diagnostic print. If the busy pin is low, then it exits this while loop and becomes, and starts this line, printing that it's writing the data, then it calls an internal function bus write data. This merely takes this data and puts it onto the 8-bit data bus. It then merely toggles the strobe, which is another internal function, and then clears the bus, which is the last internal structure. So let's take a look at those now. Bus write is down here, so this again takes character data, creates this mask, and then loops through, doing bitwise AND between the mask and the data. If the mask turns out false or zero, then we know that that pin is low. Otherwise, the mask and the data is true, and so the bit must be high. After each operation, we multiply the mask by two, and this moves the mask to the next bit, and we then interrogate the next bit. This is how the data is written to the bus. Clearing the bus is a similar operation, except we know what the value for each bus should be. It's low. And so it just does the loop through 8 and puts out low. We looked at toggle strobe already. Now we can look at some of the higher versions. For instance, string right here takes a string 
and of course merely it uses heavily the C string function which is inherent in the string class and the length function so we loop loop through the length of the string and then character write the C string version of that string at a certain index so data string dot C string will return an array of characters which is the old style version of C string while we passed a new style so this is very high level nice and easy to use we expand that into the low level one and then take the index of it and that's how we write one character at a time from this string class then we have line write here which is very similar it uses the string write function with the data string but then it tabs on these two here 13 is carriage return and 10 is line feed and so if we use line write this string data string represents one line of text then it'll automatically basically press enter at the end for us and or return to the beginning of the next line here is an example of how this uh, library could be used it's epson 80.h is included we then make the printer epson 80 printer class so we make an instance sorry of the epson 80 and we call it printer then here we have the pin definitions which you have to take into account from the table we had earlier and from the interface itself so which pins match up to which ones then we create this test string this is my test string deal with it and this is of the string class then of course in setup we call the begin function with all our uh, pin names and that sets the printer up this five second wait here is merely for diagnostics and then we print using the line write function down here in an infinite loop delaying 50 seconds between each print and so what we expect to show up whoops in the printer is this is my test string deal with it then on the next line the same text and it'll keep printing this over and over again and that'll show that this library is operational okay so now with the library made and the interface made it's time to test out if it's gonna work now one little special little thing that's added to this project is actually this board uh, which is actually a board that uh, belonged to my father, uh, or currently still does belong to my father, I shouldn't make it sound so morbid, but uh, it basically taps into the printer cable and then gives you these status lights which are, uh, correspond to the value being transmitted on each of the pins, so these red LEDs here are the data bus, then we have uh, busy and acknowledge and, and error and strobe, so we'll be able to see a bit more of what's going on. So that uh, just runs off this 9 volt and kind of taps in to the cable going from the interface to the printer and gives us a nice little feedback. So ultimately these three LEDs should correspond to the busy acknowledge and strobe on that on that board. So here we have the Arduino and the interface that's all ready to go. Got power here coming from a laptop just off, off screen. Uh, got the printer here it's happy to go. It's plugged in so we need to load it with some paper so may as well do that now. There we go, we have some paper in the printer now, and we should be ready to go. So now to test it, we're going to have the printer on, and then we're going to power up the Arduino. The Arduino is going to initialize, uh, wait five seconds, and then start printing. So that goes active. We should have some arbitrary five second wait, and we should have some printing. If all goes well. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Whew. I was starting to think it wasn't going to work, to be brutally honest. That would have been embarrassing. Uh, but if I swing the camera around, we should be able to see what exactly it's printing. So we can see here, it's repeatedly printing, this is my test string deal with it, which is what was coded into the, or hard-coded into the Arduino, and sent through the library to print. So it's going to keep doing that forever. Now I'll try and get a view here. So there you can see the lights, you can see them kind of dimming away and switching as the uh, printer and the interface talk to each other. Again, the communication rate is so high that it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So it's going to run out of paper soon, but there we go, operational printer. So all in all, an excess, a successful project. I uh, got a old printer to print some useless text on a piece of paper uh, using a very basic setup with our, our Arduino Mega. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the description. And if you, if you want any of the source code, I'm afraid I don't have a hosting set up yet, but if you ask me and give me your email, I'll certainly send it to you. Again, it doesn't really come with any guarantees, and it's pretty, pretty basic. But other than that, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and, and like and subscribe. <laughs>